you lovely creative people. This is June from Oakland Witch Lane Designs and this is video one on how to how I made my witch's bathroom castle. So I think um, I've been working on this piece a lot and I'm up to basically finish sculpting the witch and putting her in here and putting the layers of um, resin so I can add the bubbles on top. But before I did that, I wanted to show you what the inspiration for this whole piece was. Now I went out and I bought this ceramic, white ceramic. It was totally white on all sides, the whole thing. Uh, bathtub. And I bought this a couple of years ago. And I just wanted to start using things that I had because I was getting tired of them laying around the house. So I was going to make a mermaid um, put her in here with bubbles and all of that and I had this whole idea and of course I didn't do it right away and um, then all of a sudden I saw on either Facebook or Pinterest or someplace that someone else had did the same idea and I just didn't want to copy it or go or feel like I was copying it so I did I was looking on Pinterest one day because a lot of times I get inspiration from pictures and I saw this gothic bathtub. I don't know how I got into, maybe, I don't know how I got into gothic bathtubs. So maybe I just looked up gothic furniture and bingo bango, there comes this gothic bathtub with this big octopus on the side of a clawfoot looking tub. And um, it was just fabulous. And then this idea struck that I could take the sides of my bathtub and put some kind of texture to them and I could make it a witch's bathtub where she's just lying back and relaxing after a long day. And then because I'm watching so much with um, Bentley House Minis and Heather Tracy and even where the gnomes live, I wanted to make a little bit of a diorama around it. So that's how this whole idea came to pass. So. The first thing I did was I took painter's tape and I, because, okay, go back a little bit. Ceramic is very hard to paint using regular paints. I don't have an airbrush. I don't want an airbrush. I do have this Rust-Oleum, Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch 2X Ultra Cover Flat, back, flat Black Primer. Now I think Heather recommended this one. If not, I had gotten it before. I don't really remember, but I had this in my arsenal of crafty goods because I have spray painted bottles before with a flat back, flat black. Oh, we can't even say that. Flat black primer. So I had this and I decided, well, this was what I was going to use as the first or maybe the first two coats, I believe it was. I used two coats of this. So I put black paint, uh, not black, I put painter's tape all around the rim because I did not want the rim to get uh, painted because I was spray painting it. I put it all around the rim. I went outside and I sprayed it twice. Let it dry. Very light coats. Um, this stuff sticks to glass really well. So, or ceramic, something with the shiny um, surface. I also, before I did that, I, I tried to rub it with some sandpaper and I really wasn't getting anywhere because this is such a glossy coat. So I just said, okay, forget that. I cleaned it off with alcohol. Then I sprayed it and I sprayed it twice. Once that was done, I wanted to add some texture. So again, using stuff that I have in my house, I have these, this that I had bought for another project and um, well, they're coming off. This was I got at the craft store at Michael's and I used, as a matter of fact, because they have, um, they don't have right and lefts on this, this particular piece. So I had one, I put it over here and then I attached it on this side with the sticky side out, just put it down. And that was nice texture, but oh, and I didn't take it, I didn't take one of them over. But then I, I really wanted some more texture all over the top, as you can see. So I have some stickers, and these are 
see some of these have been used. These are some of the stickers. They come in gold and they come in silver. And I'm trying not to get you blown out by the, the light. These I got at one of a kind, OOAK Artist Emporium uh, online. I'll put her link down below or a little crooked. I don't like being crooked. There we go. And I started to put the stickers on randomly all around. I had other stickers from Michaels that I used and I just put them all around the tub. And then I realized that the difference between the depth of this and all of those, it was, there was a really much bigger difference than there is now. So I took one of my, um, my, those, uh, pearls from Tim Holtz. I forgot what those perfect pearls. I think is it called or liquid pearls, liquid pearls. It doesn't matter which color. And I went around and I outlined all of the stickers with the perfect pearls. Again, I happened to use a gold color. I thought I took it with me over here, but I did not. Um, and I outlined all of the stickers and made some dots with it just so that there would be more texture here. When they dried, I took this Liquitex gloss heavy gel with my paintbrush, I pounced just all around so I could have more of a rough texture on all of it. And once I had that gel over everything, I was able to use the gesso and paint it again. Or maybe I went outside and used my spray paint. It really doesn't matter because now, uh, either way, once you put this on, you can use regular paint. You don't have to use spray paint. Once that was all done, I took off all of the painter's tape and I wanted to make the feet either gold or silver toned. So I started with this using gold, silver. I also have, um, and I should get them for you. Hold on one second so I can show you the different colors I have. I know, very professional. I keep forgetting to bring things over. Okay, I used the vintage gold. I used some of the brushed iron. And then I just got this new one, Firebird, which is a very coppery, reddish coppery color. It's a beautiful color. It's a little bit more reddish tone than it shows. It shows more orange on screen. I believe anyway, I don't know, maybe on yours will show it differently. So I'm just rubbing that on the feet. I didn't finish all of them because I just wanted to show you what I was doing before I went too far ahead. This isn't a reenactment. This is just sort of letting you know what I did so far. And then for this side, I took my, now where did they, oh, here they went, here they went. I took my old watercolors from high school. This is a set of Grumbacher. And this is the rust or brown light it's called, but this is a rusty tone. And I just took that and I started to paint all over like the rim and down here. I still have to finish this, you know, these feet up here. Um, I don't, I might add uh, some grunge over here just to show like some rusting by the legs or a little bit more grunge. If I do that, I will definitely show you. But so I added some of that here and some also some blue, which is on the other level. I added some of this blue, which is like a blue greenish color. If you can see it, I know the light is flashing, but if I do that, it'll just be too shadowy. But I'm using watercolors to give some 
different tones and effects to the bathtub because I don't want it to seem, I like this side better, I don't want it to seem like it's brand new because then it really doesn't feel real to me like someone was using it. Okay, so I will continue doing that. Anybody can do that. It's very easy. It's spray taping off, spray painting it twice very lightly, adding some stickers or whatever you have. You could do it or you could sculpt something with polymer clay and put it on the side. This can go in the oven because it is glass and if you do it at a low temperature, that you need to um, cure polymer clay. You could you could definitely do that. Um, I didn't have anything in mind that I wanted to sculpt on here, and I wanted to start using some of my stickers, so that's what I did. Okay, so now I want to show you. I need to attach this wire in here. And there's a reason for it. There will be a little um, pitcher coming on this side of it, pouring water into the witch's bathtub. Uh, but the thing I need to do is use this product. It's called Epoxy Sculpt. It's a two-part product, A and B, that you um, mix together. It's permanent self-hardening and waterproof. I'm going to use some of that to make sure that this stays in here. Now, could I use um, glue? I'm sure I could. But let's have fun using some epoxy scalp because this, by the way, is going to be filled with uh, clear resin. I am going to color it a little and then a whole bunch of bubbles. But let me show you this product if you've never used it. This is A and this is B. Okay. So you take a little piece of A out. I don't really need a lot. And you hold that on the side. And you try to take the same amount of part B. Now, I don't have a scale that would weigh such a minuscule amount, so I'm doing it by eye as best I can. And I think that's pretty good. Take a little off. I really don't need a lot of this stuff. Let me see. How do I feel? That looks good. Okay, you cover these. Not that air. Oops, no, that one goes here because I saw some gray on this cover. Okay, so you just mix these. In this project, I have used everything, every kind of glue, every kind of epoxy that I have. You just mix it together until you can no longer see any streaks of either the gray part or the white part. And with this size piece, it's very easy. This is very easy to do. I wouldn't want to have to do this with a really big lump, but with this size piece, it's fine. I mean, I've worked with this a little bit with larger pieces than this. Okay, now I, I'm trying to remember how long it takes. Um, clean up with soap or water. Very helpful for smoothing. If you don't want, um, if you don't want to have fingerprints on it, if this was your sculpture and you were just, no one's going to see this by the time we're done. And it says wear disposable gloves. Oops, didn't do that. Measure equal parts of A and B. Always retrieve parts A and B with different tools. That's because they want don't want you to contaminate the two. And it says mix and knead together for two minutes until thoroughly combined and a uniform color is achieved. 
um, if you don't mix it correctly, or if you don't really mix it, you're not, it's not going to work. Allow mixed product to rest for five minutes for be better handling. We're going to not do that either. The working time is one to three hours. Um, you could, no baking, so we're not going to put this, 24 hour full cure to rock hard semi gloss finish. Okay, so this is going to take 24 hours to cure, but you have one to three hours work time. I think I've been mixing this for about two minutes. Okay. Now I want this, whoa, the other way. It's not started off wrong. I just want this metal piece right here, this piece right here, to just stay down in my tub. So I'm just going to press this in, and I even think I made too much of this right now, in the bottom of my tub. I know the wire is going back a little, but I just wanted to get some on that side, making sure I center it. Now, once I fill this tub with resin, this wire will be very well incorporated in here. I don't think there should be any kind of chemical reaction between the epoxy sculpt and the resin. I'm going to be pouring the resin in here in like quarter inch, half inch layers because it dries better. And the resin that I have, it's, I'll show it to you when I'm up to resin. I think it's called clear class cast clear cast by Illuminite. Um, it works when you're trying to do such a deep pour. It works better they say in half half inch increments and I am going to follow that rule. I want the resin to cure. Now the witch's feet are not going to be down there. They're going to be up here on the side of the tub. But I just wanted you to see that and how I got this little piece in here. Now this piece will be, once it's dry in here, um, I will be attaching a little picture that I made out of polymer clay. I believe I show it in one of the other later videos. I haven't been doing this in order. That's why I feel like it's such a movie thing because um, movies aren't done in order and this isn't done in order either. Um, I wanted to finish or get finished the castle surround as much as possible uh, because I, and then I also had to wait for the resin, which I got, but I wanted to finish that as much as possible before I went back to this because that has a lot of parts into it. Okay, so I can use water. I have some water over there. I always like to have some kind of water on my desk. That one happens to be a little black because I've been using a lot of black paint. But again, no one is going to see this because there will be bubbles here. At least I hope there will be bubbles there. We'll see when we get to it. I'm just smoothing it out a little bit around the edges just so I feel like it's got a, a smooth, not necessary, but I just feel like doing that while you're all here watching. And it's very smooth and work. You could work nice, nicely with it. And I have used this product um, in the past and this does dry to a rock hard. Um, there is no removing this. 
So if I want to remove this wire, I just have to cut, cut it out as close as I possibly can because this isn't coming out of there at all. Okay, so I'm going to do some more work on this. I'm going to let that dry. Got some of it over here. That's okay. Doesn't matter. Just adds more texture. I'm going to be finishing painting, or not painting, using my waxes on all my feet. Um, putting some more colors on this side. And then since this is watercolor, it'll come off if water gets in, touch, uh, in contact with it. So I will be using a maybe another matte medium, not the glossy one. I have a matte that I'll probably be pouncing on all of this just so that the watercolors stay where I put them. And then we're ready once the witch gets, I haven't finished sculpting her, but once the witch starts or finishes and I can place her in here, I can start pouring the clear resin to get it up and then we'll do the bubbles. So I, I wanted to share uh, the inspiration piece and this was what it was and look for the other I probably wait I'll probably add more to this this particular video maybe show you how I poured one of the um, layers and then also doing the bubbles so um, it'll continue on a little bit all right see you in the next part Okay, so I wanted to show you how I was able to create a little bit of uh, rust looking um, just rust looking stuff on the sides of my tub. Uh, it, it was very easy to create. Sorry, I don't know why all of this is so wet over here. Um, but I have some sand. And this sand came from Sedona, as a matter of fact, when we went on a family trip there. And I'm just taking some of the sand. Now this is the same rust that I'm going to use on the top of the battlements of my castle. I'll show you that. I've used some of it already. But I want to do a little bit more. That's why I'm putting so much of this in here. So that's just sand and techy glue. Okay. I don't know what the mixture is. I don't know if it's one to one. I have no idea really. I'm just putting some glue in there. If I think it's enough, it's enough. If not, I'll put in more glue or more sand. I'm just taking anything that I have to mix it up. So you get a very sandy paste. Then I'm going to take some burnt sienna acrylic paint to make it a little this to a little bit more orangey. This to me is really the color of rust to my eyes anyway. Just trying to get this stuff off. But I'm just going to take a little bit of paint. Okay. If I need more, mix the paint in. I'll put more in. Um, I have a little water over here, so I'm just dipping my stick in water just to help everything mix. I don't want to get it too wet, but I want to be able to mix the paint. So it's a nice orangey color, a dark orangey color. 
All I'm doing is dipping my my wooden stick in really quickly. And there. So now it's all pretty pretty much colored up. Now you can also you can paint over this once it's dry. So if the color isn't exactly how you'd like it, don't fret. You can do very light washes of color. Okay, give a little bit. And where I really would like to concentrate it is where the foot meets the tub itself because that's where the metal met metal. So I'm just putting it more concentrated in that area and when this dries if it's not dark enough for me then I will definitely um, put more paint on it water it down really well once this tacky glue dries it's pretty much there in there stays where you put it But I also go over it, and I don't have it here, with a very matte, very matte. Well, it's a, it's like a varnish, but it's, it's a matte um, varnish, and it's a one of those uh, varnishes that really is matte. Because sometimes you get a matte varnish, and it still has a shine to it. I'm going to show it to you on the other side. I used the matte varnish. I colored it a little different with my watercolors. I put in more of like a straight uh, burnt sienna color and then some ochre colors just to give it a little tonal differences over there. But you can see how unshiny this whole thing is right here. It's not really shiny at all, but it's a protective coat to keep this on there. And I just figured that there would be more rust towards the bottom of the tub because the water would hang out there. So I'm just adding a little bit of the paste here just to give it a more, again, just different textures. Just put it on the back, pick up pieces that might have fallen off. And I, the sand is fine enough that, and you can use craft sand. I just had this sand. I mean, you don't have to go to Sedona, although it's a beautiful place if you want to go to Sedona or any of the, I call it the red earth parts of the United States where they have this beautiful color uh, sand or dirt whatever you want to classify it as it's falling over here so I figured I'd take it off my mat oh and I was talking about I'm sorry I'm talking about the matte finish the reason why I put the matte finishes is, is to make sure that it stays on there that's, I'm squirreling a lot. I do that. Um, you want to make sure that it stays on there and doesn't come flaking off. And between the glue and that mat, someone's going to have to really want to take it off, really to get it to come off. But it just adds, um, again, just texture. Now, I was thinking about because uh, this tub area is really rather nice. Um, it's very new looking and shiny. And I was looking at some bathtubs on old bathtubs in Pinterest. And they had little pieces of rust where it went on the side of the tub. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not, but I am going to put a little. If you don't see it in the finished product, it means I didn't like it. 
but just to make this tub not look so shiny. It might be too much of a texture up from the tub itself. So I don't know if I'm going to leave it there, but in case I do, that's how I just put on my little sand. And when I saw it on the tub on Pinterest, it had more of a black color to it. So I just might make this black sort of where the enamel chipped off the metal tub. So we'll see. Because this is uh, such, such a high gloss finish on this, if I want to scrape that off, I'm going to be able to. So I'll just leave a little bit on there right now just to see how I feel about it. But in the meantime, I'm going to take more of this mixture and just put it on the top of my battlements over here where I feel I could use a little bit more. Sometimes your fingers are your best. Tools in the world. So I just, yeah, just to make, again, just going for a little texture. Now, because my um, sand is so red or brown, I would find it hard to do this, but I'm thinking that I could also use, if I had a whiter sand or even a beige sand, which I might have to go out and buy, um, I think I could use that to make moss on the side. Oops, you can't see it. On the side, I think it would make a very pretty moss color. Going on the inside. I don't want to leave the inside without a little texture. And I'm just being very haphazard with it. I'm not, I mean, I don't think rust has a, a real pattern to it once it starts. And again, if I feel that it's too much um, color here, I can just paint over it. And you'll just, all you will see is it's just texture. And hopefully the right size texture. This, if you haven't seen it, is the inside. I'm sure you might have. I'm doing, I'm, I'm not doing any of the videotaping in order in the sense of whenever I get a section finished, no matter where it is, I'm trying to put it in order for you. Just taking off some of this on the top here. I'm going to try to put it in 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 playlists so that it, it there's some order. But doing it just like they do a movie, they do it however in all different orders and then just ed edit it together. Sort of what's happening over here with me. All right, so. I'm going to let this dry and uh, if I have to paint over it again to dull it down a little bit I will and when it's 
all dried and painted to the way that I like it, I will be taking that very mad varnish that I have that hopefully I will get over at my desk sometime so that I can tell you and show you what product it is. If not, I will definitely put it down in the description of these. So onward and upward to the next part of this. See you soon. Okay, so we are finally up to the point where I can be pouring the two-part epoxy resin. I'm using Amazing Clear Cast to fill up the tub so I can put the bubbles on top of it. Now, I am not going to show you on any part of these videos how I sculpted the witch. She does not have clothes on. She's in the bathtub. I didn't put a bikini on her. And besides, my videos are not for children. I wasn't trying to be blatant about it, but I just tried to get some parts of her anatomy um, because under the bubbles, make the, you know, the bubbles to um, lay properly. Here's the witch. We, I did a live stream the other day of her hair, how I did her hair. I fixed it a little bit from the live stream. I added this little gray streak from one of the recommendations of uh, Christine, who's on my panel, and she does have a bun. And you could see the bun a little bit better like this. I added a few curly cues. And of course, this is not totally done yet. I'll probably add ribbon or some chopstick looking things holding her bun up. She still needs her makeup and her earrings, but that'll come later. Their ladies were also saying that maybe I should put a tattoo on her arm. That will also come later. Okay, I have poured two uh, resin pours so far. I've added a little purple. This is not purple. Well, it is. It's eggplant alcohol ink by Adirondack. And you're going to see that it comes out a totally different color. And then somehow in the as the resin is setting, it turns purple. Now, when you're pouring resin and it's a deep pour, deeper than a half an inch, you're supposed to pour in half inch in increments. Um, but it doesn't, you can do it within four to six hours of your last pour. Otherwise you have to wait like 48 hours and you have to rough up the surface. And I don't really want to do that. Um, so I have poured two so far and they were four hours apart. And I'm thinking that this will be the last pour that I have to do. There do uh, a little piece of something got on this. Now, I'll be honest with you, there are a lot of bubbles in this, and it's probably because I didn't do it properly. I am not the expert on pouring resin. There are plenty of videos on YouTube that show you how to do it. I was just trying to see if I could get that piece of smushy up, but it's in there. Nobody's going to see it because there will be bubbles all around. Okay. All right. So enough yakking and let's get to pouring the resin. So, oh, as a, just to finish that thought, there are a lot of people that know how to pour resin a lot better than I do. Um, so go watch them, but this is what I've been doing just so you know. This is a regular cup, and they suggest wooden stirs. All right, now you have to put the same amount of part A as in part B to make sure that it works. Now, I don't know if this resin was old or not. This part A is real gunky, but it's working, and that's all I am concerned about. And I have to use about two of these um, two tablespoon cups to fill up the tub half an inch. But let's see, this is A. I'm trying to leave A always on my left side and put B on my right side. B is a little thinner, it pours a little quicker. And make sure 
it's the same amount in both cups. It's equal measurements. And let me just check it on eye level. Uh, I have a little bit more in B than I have in A. So let me do this. There's B in the cup. Okay. I left a little in there. Wait, a little bit more. Uh, yeah, B than A. So I left a little in here. And now I'm pouring A. Now, A takes a really long time to get out. It's very sort of like um, molasses, while B is more like maple syrup. Now, you have to stir this for two minutes until it becomes clear. I just want to get it out of here so it as much out of here as I can so it doesn't affect the second measurement. Okay. Now, whoops, I mixed up the caps. I'm going to think it's that way. All right. I'm only going to go halfway because the last time I had to throw out some resin because there was a little bit more than a half an inch and I don't want to because the uh, witch is displacing her body is displacing some of the liquid so let's cap that and let's try to get the exact amount of B I, like I said I left a little of B in there because I had more B Last time, let's not make the same mistake. Just a tad more. There we go. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Now, I got the um, 8 ounces and 8 ounces. So, of course, totally it's 16 ounces here. Pour them both in. I won't be using any of these cups again. That's the one thing about this resin that I really don't like. It's not really environmental. I'm throwing out a lot of plastic cups. I don't do this that often. As a matter of fact, this is probably... Oh, I don't even know when the last time I used resin was this kind of resin anyway. Oh. I need that stick for something. Get it all out because it was a part of the measurement. Yeah, make sure I have all of B in here this time. I don't want to be short on B. Okay. Now, for the alcohol ink. Now, this is going to turn, let's see, let me just put in my drops. One two and one more as you can see that's purple watch what happens when I mix it and you mix it for two minutes so I'm going to be looking look at it it's turning green but then it sets up and it turns purple uh, I don't 
honestly, I'm not a chemist. I don't understand why this is happening the way it happens, but we're just going to go with it. If you mix it for two minutes, and I'm watching the timer on my computer, I'm going to have a cup of coffee, or rather a sip of coffee while I'm doing this. It's turning this lovely shade of blue-green. And when this first happened, I was like, okay, I can go with this. I can go with this color. If this is the color that it's coming out, that's fine. And it says to mix thoroughly, measure equal amounts, mix thoroughly, pour slowly, and it says to slowly mix. So I should, maybe that's the reason why I'm getting all of my air bubbles, because I am was mixing a little too fast. But 10 minutes after I pour this, and we're not going to wait for 10 minutes um, on screen. Anyway, I, you can spritz a fine mist of, of rubbing alcohol, which is what I have in here, on top of it. And it does take a lot of the surface bubbles out. Now, while this is curing, you should keep it or put like a cover over it so no dust, like that piece that I was trying to get out, goes in there. If I wasn't putting a ton of bubbles on top of all of this stuff, I would be very upset about that piece, but we are going to let it go. So that was one minute. And with resin, you know, you could take shortcuts in a lot of things. Do not take shortcuts with resin. If they say to mix it for two minutes, then you mix it for two minutes. Um, especially with this clear cast stuff. I know um, Nikki, uh, a disorganized crafter, and Crystal of uh, Rustic Ink Angel Designs, they use resin an awful lot. Uh, they use Illuminite, which I think, yeah, this is Illuminite also. This is the clear one. But they use resin that sets up quicker. It comes in white, cream, and black. And they're pros at this. I'm just doing this so we can have some water. I've also watched a lot of other people on YouTube that work with resin. Not that it helped me while I was doing it, because when push comes to shove, we just went forward with this whole thing. Okay, this is about two minutes. I'm just going to stir it a little bit more. This takes a while to set, so it's not a quick setting resin. So it's not like it's going to set while it's in my cup. With the quick setting resin, you ha I think you'd have to move a little bit faster. And the heat, resin when it cures generates heat, and so far it really hasn't um, felt that hot on the side of the bathtub, which I'm very happy about. Okay, that's an official two minutes. Alrighty. So now we pour. Let's get things out of the way. Let's get the alcohol ink out of the way, coffee out of the way, bring in the witch. We were trying to name her on the live stream and we came up with Zarina, I believe. So I am pouring over Her belly area, her torso. Oh, and there goes my cell phone, too. Sorry about that, guys. I forgot to mute it.
I'm probably going to need one more pour. So I will put my timer on for four hours. It's OK that I'm going over her legs, because she's going to be wet anyway. She is in a bath. And it'll drip down. Okay, let me get, it's all done. So all of this is getting tossed. I'm going to get a paintbrush because I just want to smooth out the resin that I poured on her legs. I'm sorry, I'm trying to find a paintbrush because once I use this, I'm not going to be able to use it again for anything else. So, just pouring out the resin that was on her legs just to make her legs look wet. Trying not to get too much on her arms and hands yet. Her feet are going to get resin. Now you can see, I think you can see, yes you can, the bubbles are rising up to the surface. I didn't glue her in, in here. I just sort of let the resin, once it hardens, she's not going to be able to move. She's not moving anywhere. I just let the resin, and she didn't float up. She's heavy enough because they were wondering if she was going to float up. going to be bubbles all over here. Okay, now she looks sufficiently wet on the places that will be exposed from the bubbles. And that's about it. So now I'm going to wait another four hours and pour maybe half of that in. And I'm going to put my timer on for 10 minutes because in 10 minutes I'm going to spray this again. Let me see, clock. Let's put on 10 minutes. Now spray it with alcohol just to get rid of the surface bubbles. Not that it really matters because, again, this is all going to be covered with uh, bubbles that I'm going to make. Um, but we're almost there. One more pour, and I think I am going to be done with this resin stuff, which I am very happy about. Okay, so I'll come back when I'm finished pouring, and probably well, probably the next time is when I um, put the bubbles on her. So I'll see you soon. Hey, we're back. I did pour another, um, I did have another resin pour just to get it, the water up a little bit more. <laughs> Sorry, this has gotten some dust on it. And I'm talking a little bit lower because it's very early in the morning and I don't want to wake up my children. Um, what I've done since I last saw you people was I added some color, very subtle color, and you would not see it. It just makes it look a little bit, again, more realistic. I added some blue watercolors and some um, of that, what I call the burnt sienna watercolor here, just to give it a little bit more of an aged look. I might even do some more, I don't know, but I glued this onto the wire, and while you were off screen, 
I did a resin pour on my wire. Now I can show this to you a little bit more close up. I know you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, on the other video she's yelling and now she's whispering, but maybe you can adjust the volume on your um, on what you are using to watch this. I took a practice wire and I didn't even paint it white because it was it didn't matter to me with that. What mattered to me was how I poured it. And I think you can see this, this first one, the first time there was a lot of drippy drips and I didn't like the drippy drips. Do you see it better on black? Maybe, I don't really know. Um, well, you don't wanna see the back of that. Okay, so then I decided to do it uh, on a, like trying to thin it out more. And the resin I used was this particular brand. Not that I think any of these UV resin hards are any different from the others. I have two different brands. Um, it, it, I don't know if it would matter. I think they're both the same. And then I used my um, my black light or whatever you call my UV light. It's not called a black light. I'm showing my age. My UV light over here to harden it. Oops, and I'm pointing it straight at the bottle. That's why they put them in... Um, black bottles so for people like me who are standing here don't harden up a whole little bit thing of resin okay so I did that and I have to tell you I didn't do it all at one time I did layer on time layer and every time I put another um, the drips of this as a matter of fact let me show you I can show you one let's see if I can get this done just so you can see because with that black light it hardens very quickly I am going to add some more um, uh, medium to this and that I'm going to show you later what I'm going to add just so that I could add a few more ripples. Okay, I hope that you're going to be able to see all of this. Would it be better on the black? I don't know because it's clear. Okay, so I take it and I very slowly very slowly and I have my did I put my I like to have my thing on okay let's get the mouse out anyway um, I want a little bit right over here just a little because I want more coming out of the the um, picture smooth it out And then before it gets a chance to move anywhere, I put my black light on it. And you say here, I don't know what they said, how long, but you just sit here and you do this. And you hope you're not killing your eyeballs from looking at the light. That's what I kept thinking, but then I said, I can't see anyway, so... And I, I uh, purchased all of, no, I purchased the resin overseas, but the this little flashlight I got off of Amazon. And you just stand here. It's got a, it's got a very strange smell to it. it. Almost smells like frankincense to me. Um, I know that you really shouldn't be touching it with your hands. And you look, but other than that, I sort of like the smell. Although at first it was, it was like a little weird. Um, then I had, when you pour a lot of that resin, sometimes you can see a little steam coming off of it. Sort of neat, a little scary, but neat. Because this uh, generates a lot of heat, I believe, when it dries. So you just leave it there for a little bit. On all sides. And then you test it, and it is hard. Okay? So that's, that's the whole thing to that. Now, getting to the bubbles. Turn off my flashlight. Let's put these on the side. 
and I tried to take out every tool that I think I could possibly be using in this part of it. I ran a test of two different mediums. Now this is called, this is how old it is, you can't even see. I don't know why it wrinkled and got all cracked here, but it's very nice crackling texture. It's water effects and it's a heavy body product, a moldable and will hold its shelf shape to create pond ripples, waterfalls, rapids, and more. Apply onto a non-stick surface so you can peel it up and put it on your project. Shape and texture with a toothpick or craft stick. Let, let dry until clear. Now this is that product and I added some bubbles to it. Let's get, let's get something so you can see. I added bubbles to it. Uh, I mean, not bubbles. I added some glitter to it. I'm sorry. I, I've been painting with black paint. This I have never painted with so much black paint in my whole entire life on this on this castle, except maybe for my raven that I did, who's hanging out right above me. Hello. Um, it was a little too see-through for me. Now I could have added a little bit of white paint to it, but um, I I wanted to see if I had other products another product I could use. I added some glitter to see what the glitter effect would be. Um, I added some before, like when I was mixing it with the bubbles, and then I added some after, and I had two different colored glitters. Uh, this was one of them. It's a lighter purple, and the other one was a darker purple, and I realized I didn't like the darker purple as much. Okay, then I used this product and this is hold on this is art basics 3d matte gel and I don't know if it's a peg what does it say a peg clear it's a to use apply with the palette knife to add texture adhere embellishments or create dimensions on your product um, so I think I like this one because this one had more of the white background to it, so I didn't have to add any paint. But this is just going to be the first coat. Okay, let's Okay, let's see it on here. The difference of the two. This to me looks more like bubbles. And although I do love this because of how shiny it is, I don't really think bubbles are that shiny. And once I put my other stuff that I'm going to be putting on top, I think I'll have it shiny enough. But if I don't have it shiny enough, I can always add a little of that water effects right on top of everything. We're mixing products here. Okay, now, now that I got that done, I want to tell you about a shop online. I've mentioned it before quite a few times, but it's called One of a Kind Artist Emporium. And I'll try to remember to put the link in this video when I do it. One of a kind artist emporium. And they, she has, Judy, her name is. Let's try to get these in order so you can see what I have. And these are really well. Okay. These are all different glass marble beads. This is four millimeter, three millimeter. This is a blue moonstone deco bead. This is uh, 1.5 millimeter and I like it's um, a little bit more uh, pearlized or opaque than the other ones. Here is the 2 millimeter and this is the 0 0.80 millimeter. So I have all different sizes of these. Plus I have these little teeny 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 ones all and this is all um, having like the AB finish. And I also have in the supplies that, you know, you start collecting supplies. It's just really tiny glass marbles. I think they would probably be, 
the 80.80 size, and these do not have any AB finish on them whatsoever. So these are the ones that I am going to use primarily for the first layer because I've realized that although you can add a lot of depth to everything with these, like you can really make it thick, it takes an eternity to dry. So I'm going to be doing it layer by layer. So let's start. Take a tray or whatever that you have because I like to mix the bubble stuff in the tray first and apply it on to her because um, you have to mix the glass marbles in there. I'm using my 3D that gel. Um, it's sort of brand new. Okay, shut this up. And if I need a little bit more, that's fine because, again, like I said, this is the first layer and it does, this doesn't dry that fast. This has taken over 24 hours to dry to the point where it doesn't look wet. Yeah, I, can, I picked it up off the foil and it finally doesn't feel wet because I, I did all of this. Well, I didn't practice on tin foil. I practiced in here as a matter of fact. So I'm just going to pour a good amount of glass beads in there. And if I need more, I'll put more in. If I need, you know, whichever product I need more of, I will put more in. I think I'm probably going to need more glass beads. So, and the reason why I'm doing this in a tray is because they go all over the place. And if I was smarter, I would have uh, did this like you do with pasta, make a little circle in the middle. And pour your stuffing in the circle and then mix. So maybe we'll do that the next mix because I have to add more. So make a little circle in the center. Can you see this? The glare is atrocious. Okay. There's not much I can do about the glare. Just pour some more of your glass marbles in the center and mix them up. And what I'm looking for is a lot of glass marbles in there. I'm not looking to see a lot of the, um, and you can't tell. There's no way I can show that on camera. I'm sorry, guys. But this is, um, I want there to be almost more glass marbles then there is texture paste to the point where the texture paste is almost dry. Well, maybe not like dry, but close to it. Now, I'm going to add, just because I'm going to have a little fun. Where'd they go? I have a few, and I'm not going to add a lot of these, but since this is a purple bubble bath, I'm going to put in a few of these. Just so that they just have a little color here and there. Not a lot, because I can always add more onto subsequent layers, and then, you know, it's not. But you don't want to overdo. And I'm also going to add a little glitter. Now this will probably not show as much. And again, when I do the last couple of layers, I can sprinkle this on very sparingly. So this just gives it a little bit of a, you know, if, if you see this at all, it gives it a little color. 
Oh, one of the things I wanted to mention when you buy from uh, that place, the one of a kind Artist Emporium, O O A K Artist Emporium.com, is every time you buy, she gives you a little gift attached to her business card. And this glitter was just, she tries, she's really fun because. She doesn't know what you're doing, but she tries to match. I mean, it's, it's a thoughtful gift. She tries to match um, the color of what you're ordering, you know, I because if I'm ordering a lot of uh, colors in, in brown or, or green, she'll try to give me either like a green glitter or a brown glitter. It's I always look forward to buying from her, and I also... Uh, I buy my little lights, my little lights that were in the witch's castle and the candles from her. And I always try, I always wonder, like, what is she thinking? How is she thinking? I mean, she doesn't just throw things in willy-nilly. She really uh, tries to figure out what colors you're using. Now, this needs more of these bubbles. Now, because this is my first coat, I am not going to be putting a lot of the um, the good bubbles, the ones with the uh, AB finish on here. This is just my first coat here. And when I put these on, a lot of times I can just, especially the bigger ones, I can just place them on. I think I just would like a little bit more of this glitter. Oh, it gets so messy all the time. No, 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 no. Never do it that way because you always end up in a mess. That's why you're getting glitter all over yourself because you're touching it. I really, you know, I don't mind black paint all over my hands, but glitter drives me crazy. Figure that out. And I think I need just another little pour of these. I can't give you any measurements because as you can see, I'm trying to figure it out as I go. This is not a measurement, something that I can measure. Um, I have no idea. Now that's not very helpful. Okay, I understand, but you just uh, have to figure it out as you go and what seems right to you. Now comes the moment of truth. Let's get some bubbles on her. Let's see how it stays on this resin that I poured. Again, this is just the one that we're trying to coat, put a base coat on. This is not going to be my final texture. But this is just so she doesn't, she's not naked anymore, hopefully. Now I have to build up a lot of bubbles to get here, but um, we'll see. We'll see about all of this. I might just add the bubbles on top and not have to build up as much. We'll see when we get there. I figured uh, my pal this palette knife might be easier to use. And I want to get right up to the edge of the tub. And then clean it off. And I'll come back once I'm done with more of a cloth to clean it up. Okay, put that there. Now 
Now there's more finish. Oh, I might even need more than what I made here. I thought I was making so much, but I didn't. It's not even filling the tub. Okay, I can spread it out a little bit more. I didn't even get the other side of her legs. Hey. All right, that's this is a clay shaper. It's a chisel point. How in goodness name did I get a hair on that? Okay, this is So you just take it, and I'm probably going to have to make another batch just of this beginning coat, and I'll do that off screen. I'm not going to show, you know, you just saw me do it. It's nothing too exciting. I'm mixing glass marbles. But you see, now that I've added this coat here, um, my next coat that I add, I can start putting the really pretty bubbles on. And how I might do that is, I have to figure it out, is in some areas I, um, I'll mix it up again with the medium, but then in certain areas I might um, just put the bubbles on or drop a couple of different size bubbles on just to give it some uh, difference various various difference in sizes of the bubbles but you see how I'm doing this now I know every time I lift up I'm making a peak and bubbles aren't really they're more rounded peaks so when this stuff starts to dry a little bit so it's not so sticky. I'm going to take my finger, I'm going to wet it and gently press it down so it has more of um, a smooth uh, texture on top and not such a peaky texture on it. And what I'm really concentrating on is where it's butting up to things like the edge of the bathtub and on her. You want it to look like, you know, it's water, it's wet. Okay. I think this is good so far. Um, I am going to go and make another batch of this stuff off screen and just layer it on. So the next time we meet is when I'm going to be putting, hopefully, the finishing touches of the bubbles, the second layer. And honestly, if I don't feel like the second layer is, oops, I'm off screen again. I'm doing that a lot. I'm so used to not working uh, with the camera. Um, it might need, it will need another layer, and who knows, it might need three layers. I don't know, but we'll figure it out as we go, because I haven't put, done this before. I mean, I've made bubbles before for a witch's cauldron, but I have never made bubbles for a bubble bath before. So I am learning just as much as you are, if you're learning at all, or if you're just watching this for comic relief. Whatever, it's okay. So... I'll be back when this dries. And I got so much on my table, I can't even get my thing to stop the recording. Okay, here we go. See you soon. Hey, I'm going to try this again because all of a sudden the last time I was right in the middle of mixing this and my computer went down. I don't know why. We've been having trouble. It's an old computer. So what I did was I took the time to um, put all of my videos 
on a little hard drive. Okay, so here we go. I last you saw this, which was a couple of seconds ago, but it's been a few days. It's because I have to eat, let each layer of this dry, and it does take a while to dry where it's hard and I don't feel when I press it like it's moving a little bit. Now, this is the second layer. I put one layer on screen and then I put a second layer because I had to build this area up because I'm trying to get it up so that we don't see her breasts over here and a little bit more up around the legs. I am at the stage where I think I'm going to be adding one of the final coats of bubbles. And what I've done was a couple of things. First of all, I put the whole thing on a like a bead tray and I put some bounty down on it because once these, if I'm putting the beads on and straight on here, they bounce all over the place. And at least when they bounce directly on the tray, because the tray is hard, they bounce out. So with the bounty on it or the paper towel, um, it holds them down on here a little bit better. And the second thing is I put some of this 3D matte gel in here once again. And this one dries with that white, this whitish part, which was fine because that's what bubbles are. They, they're not clear. But I wanted to add a little bit more clearness to this because I already have a white undercoat. And for that, I'm using the water effects. Now, both of these products take a really long time to dry when you're putting them on this thick. And when this one dries, this one dries crystal clear. Takes a while. And if it's a very thick area, there will be a little white haze to it. But I just wanted to make it a little bit more translucent or clearer than what's been happening over here. So I put some of this down and I put some of this down too. Uh, it was maybe a half, halfy half type mixture. And I've just been mixing them together and hopefully my computer will not go down again. So I'm going to start putting my 0 0.80 millimeter beads in here. I got more, don't worry. Let's see. Because the, whoa. The little beads are the basis for everything. And I'm going to need a lot more of those, but let, let's just start mixing. And you can tell, or maybe you can't tell, but they're hopping. These, be, these little beads hop around, they bounce, and then they get all over your floor. And as you're walking through, you see these bright little specks on the floor. Hopefully you have shoes on, otherwise they can be bothersome. Now this might not be the last coat of bubbles that I put on here. I don't know, but I want this to have almost as much bubbles as paste. So just keep adding it in. And I, I, it's really hard with the glare for you to see this. Okay, so let's see how far I get my computer is making that strange sound again, so let's let's just keep our fingers crossed that I don't lose this. Because if I lose this, there is no way that I can redo this part because I'm putting the bubbles on here. Now, if I can get this high enough where I'm covering the areas that I want to cover, Yeah, I might just have to do another layer. Okay. That's okay. This is the most important part of this whole thing. So I have to get this area, this right. Let's get all of these up. My computer is um, pretty old. Whoops. 
Okay, my computer is pretty old. So I really need a new one. Let me get this out of the way for a little bit. I really need a new computer. And I'm going to be investing in one soon because it just, I don't, not only the age, I just don't think this one was made. It's about, let's see, maybe six or seven years old. And that's pretty old as far as computers go. Okay, now I'm just doing this area on screen. I'll be doing the other area off screen. I just wanted to get some of this done before this goes down completely and you don't see what I'm doing, but at least we're up to the breast area. Now I have done a little um, witch's cauldron for one of my mice. It's in my Etsy shop where I used the bubbles. And of course it was a much smaller area, but what I did was I started, hmm. Let me see, I'm trying to think how I want this to look. Let's put this over here. Yeah, I'm going to have to put another layer of this on here. I think we're going to be need one more layer. And it won't be as thick as this one, but I want one more layer of bubbles. And this, that'll probably be the last layer before the finishing touch bubbles. So I'm probably not even, well, I'll show this one just to show you can see that it's a step-by-step -step process. And I have to say that this bathtub is getting rather heavy. So I'm glad it's a ceramic tub because it can support all the weight because you know that there was four, about three or four. No, there was four to five uh, resin pores underneath all of this. Because I want to be able to um, make it a little bit more rubbly, you know, like build it up here. And then what I'm going to do, or I can show you a little bit of what I'm going to start to do. I have these 1.50 millimeter blue deco beads. And hopefully I don't make a total mess. You just start sprinkling them on top. And you have to do this layer by layer, bead by bead. And then you, you press them in a little bit because you want the bubbles to show. Those other layers were just, you know, those other beads that I was putting in was just the background layers. Background, beginning, basic, basic layers. And then I don't know if you can see this. It's so hard to, to tell. Not really. Um, you'll probably be able to see a little better. Yeah, you can start to see that I'm putting, like over in this area, some different size beads. Now these have a little blue tint to them. They're very, they're so pretty. They really are. And then you just pat them down a little bit. And maybe if I take the next size, 
these are the two millimeter beads. Two, uh, there you go, two millimeter. Again, these are all from OOAK, Artist Emporium. And you just sprinkle them around. A little bit here and there. And the big beads are going to come in last, but again, I want to put another coat, maybe, you know, some more in here and some more in there just to, you know, make it not look like all the bubbles are right, just right here because I'm trying to cover those, her breasts over. But by just pressing, okay, so that I'm going to have to put another layer. That's why I'm not going crazy with all this. But I just wanted to show you. And you just gently press them in so that they have some contact with the matte medium and the water effects. And then if this was my last layer, I would then put some of the Crystal AB.80 millimeter ones in between. But just to give you an idea, now I have a couple of more sizes. I have three, three millimeter, I have four millimeter, and I just purchased some of the really big ones, the six millimeter. So all told, we'll have a lot of um, versatility in our, hold on, something just popped up on my screen. It's amazing what's going on here. So like this is one of the big ones. So what I would do is just put it right on top. And... If it doesn't stick, I have, so can you see that right there, how big that is? If it doesn't stay with the amount of medium, and if I leave it alone, it might stick. Okay. If it ends up not sticking, what I can do at the end as the last coat is take some diamond um, glaze. I don't have it right here. It's back at my desk and just put a very light coat of that all around and that'll act like a glue to make sure that all of these big bubbles stay. But I just wanted to show you and you can see it by the way they glitter that we're starting to come in with different size bubbles and hopefully the next time I do this because I have to wait for this to dry a little bit. I can build up areas so it's not so flat and then pour these on top and it's really going to look like a nice happy bubble bath. But it'll be very pretty with these bubbles with the AB finish because I am not going to cover it like I did. I'm not going to mix these into the medium as much as I had to all these little ones. So we should be back. And for you, it'll be a couple of seconds. For me, it'll probably be a couple of days. Okay, I'll see you in a few. Okay, the last um, bubbles that I did, you can see one big bubble. I just put a big bubble there just to see. I finally got to cover this part of her, which I'm very happy about. And I haven't been working down here because I just really want to get this area done. Uh, first. So this, um, I'm going to do another layer here. I'm going to be adding more big bubbles into this layer because we're getting to the point of big bubbles. And then I'm probably just going to show it to you if I decide to do any finishing touches. Now this is the water effects, which a lot of uh, model railroad people do when they're doing their um, use rather, when they're making their waterfalls and stuff. And I seem to, I like the mixture of this stuff and the 3D matte gel. 
I like that mixture. And it dried a lot quicker. Well, I didn't put that thick of a coat on, but it dried a lot quicker than the first couple of coats. Okay, maybe I should turn keep that upside down because that'll make that move a little bit faster. I'm using more of this as a ratio than this. I have no idea if it's half and half. I'm just a little bit more of one than the other because we don't need it to be as white, I don't think. So I'm just mixing this and I'm hoping because the last time I got up to mixing, my computer decided to crash again. So let's see if we can get it all mixed up. And that's all I did was just mix the two together. They're basically the same thing. Only one dries transparent, one dries matte. This one dries, you know, the matte. I mean, not matte, white, whitish, and this one dries, if it's a thin enough layer, transparent. I'm just doing this because I want it just a little bit lighter. Okay, so I'm going to add, what size are these? Hold on, I have them in here. Uh, Chris, they're 0 0.80 mm's, millimeters. So we're going to put the rest of this thing in here. Okay, get that all in there. And you just smush them in, as you've seen me do. I have to also add bubbles to her cup, because I'm going to just put little bubbles and have it a little coming down. And I have real tiny, tiny, tiny glass, be glass marbles. These are smaller even than the 0 .80, so I'm going to be using these. There's no way you can see the size. I know my camera isn't that good that you can see it that close up, but those are really, really tiny, tiny ones. So I'm going to add some of those. And I don't even remember where I got them. I think I got them from someone who was like selling nail products. I, I've had a whole bunch of those colors a long time ago, and I really liked them because they were so, so tiny. And let me see, let me add a little bit more of the, the uh, 0.80 millimeter. Okay. Then I'm going to start adding, whoa, and maybe I should put the caps on. Okay, that was fun. <laughs> Nothing like it. These are the uh, Blue Moonstone and they're 1.5 millimeter. Okay, excitement over here. They went all over the place. And that's why, oh, here's where this went. I'm, I'm telling you, I can't find things in front of me. If it would have bit me, I couldn't find this before. And that's because it was stuck on here. Once again, I'm on my tray with the bounty on it so the bubbles don't bounce all over the place when you have fun things like I just had, little mini, mini explosions. I have all the beads in here, and I will be cleaning them up a little bit later. See, I didn't even remember where I put this when I cleaned it up the other day. I mean, when I cleaned up, I didn't clean this up, obviously. Okay, this is a little garbage. All right, so what's my next size I'm going to put in? This is the 2.0 millimeter. I'm going to add some of them. Is everything shut now? Because I really don't want to have another fun thing like that. And now, when see, the, the thing is, when they start to go into the uh, matte medium and not laying on top of it, that takes the AB finish away from them. So that's why I haven't been adding the a lot of the big ones, because the AB finish is really, really pretty. Now, I know you probably can't see it, but it really is very pretty. And I want the bubbles to be really big over here. And again, like I said, I'm going to be doing all of this off screen and then show it to you. Get all the mixture off. And you can even 
pop the beads on like this, whichever ones didn't get in, because once you, once they fall on this, the matte medium really holds them. Let me get this out of my way so I can maneuver my tub. Now this tub is getting heavier and heavier. And this has a hair in it that I don't really want in my finished product. Oh, computer, do not crash. Just do not crash. Okay. And did I want some of this to go over like her shoulders? Yeah, I did. Okay. So I think I got to make up a little bit more just to get over her shoulder area. So we'll do it again. By this time you must you'll, you'll be pros with the mixture. Some of the water effects. And I like I said, I have to turn this thing upside down. Okay, let's get a lot more. Okay. Some of this. Let me use this one because I don't want to. Come on, bud. Okay. Oh, this is a lot more. All right. We'll figure it out. Mix it up. Mix it up. Put some of these ABs in here, the little ones, the 0.80s. Got to save some for the bottom part. This is the two, the two millimeter. Okay, and here's those blue moon, which is the 1.5. All right. Okay, we're plopping this on now. I want to get up on her shoulders a little bit. And maybe behind. Yes. Now again, when I am off camera, I am going to um, be fixing this a little bit. Because I just really want to show you I'm trying not to put my hands in it just really want to show you um, the technique for adding bubbles okay And you just have to make them a little wavy. Okay. And if I don't like the way this looks like on her shoulders when it dries, I will take it off. You can peel this stuff off to a certain extent. Get off her nail. I don't want it on her nail. I think it'll look better. If I have, and that, why do I have hair? Sorry guys, I know I'm having a little conversations more so than normal when you're talking and you're doing something by the, on the computer. Just mixing up a little. Okay. Alrighty. Now, this. 
and get that and in between over there. I don't know if it's the same. <laughs> I think it's the same hair. It's just coming back to haunt me. Okay. Okay. Get it under her arm. Get some under the arm. Under, under, under. Big fluffy. Okay. And I don't like the way it's not going in between here. Okay. Now you have um, a lot of, I swear that must be the same hair. Okay, just buried it in the bubbles, that's it. And that, um, you have a lot of work time with this, this stuff. It doesn't dry that fast. So you can really work, work with it if you don't like it and move it around a little bit. I'm just trying to get it in, uh, it's her hair that's coming off. Okay, I'm just trying to get it in all the areas. Big fluffy bubbles. Come on, you can come, come over here a little bit more, right? All right, we're going down. Want to get it down in there. Sometimes I didn't want to use my fingers because I was trying to keep them clean, but sometimes they're the only things that really work well. Oh, my head's in the way. Sorry. Oh, thank goodness I shut that because that would have been a disaster. Okay. Let's get it a little bit more even. Okay. Want to get down in there. I know I'm getting a lot of this on her skin, but it'll come off. You know, the skin that not that doesn't necessarily have to have bubbles on it. Okay. All right. And I want to go up more there. We want to have it. That looks. Okay. We need to get some bounce, uh, some paper towels. So we can clean up our hair. How do I like that? That hair. Okay, get the hair out. Okay. All right. All right, now I think that, I think, okay, I don't know, because the cauldron that I made that I had bubbles in was a lot tinier than this. There's a lot of surface area here. 
I think we can start adding in. Now these are the three mil, uh, the three millimeter low. Okay, just sort of sprinkle them on. Okay, let's put the cover on it. Then we're going to add some of the fours. Okay. And then we're going to add some of the big guys. These are the 6.0s. Turn this around. She's sticking to my paper towel. Okay. And then let's see. Add a little of the blue moon. And just sort of pat them down so they're all touching, all touching the surface. And these are some of the other ones. This is the 2.0. I know that you probably can't see this that well, but these are very pretty. Now, uh, huh. okay. I just don't want it to look like one big sheet of bubbles because bubbles, like, you know, have. That's why I think I'm going to be needing more than just. This is not going to be my finishing layer. Now I'm pushing some of them really far in because you want to have some difference. Okay. Now we have to put, get these down here so that it looks a little bit more natural. I think I want more bubbles right up there. So where's my big guys? Those are the fours. The sixes are over here. Okay. Okay, and then on the sides, a couple of sixes here and there. I don't want them to all fall out. Okay, make sure they're touching. Okay. And just pushing them in a little bit, make sure they have contact. Maybe too many big guys over here. Put some big guys over there. There's too many big ones. It doesn't look so real. Okay. Ooh, there's a lot of big guys got over here. many big guys in one spot. Put a big guy over there. Oh, got some stuff on her face and her nose. That's cute. All right. And let's see. 
add some of these to fill in. These are the uh, little ones. And let me put some of the fours here so this, the sixes don't look so big in this area. Whoa, let me add a few of the fours. Did you notice that? Did you hear me say a couple of the fours? I should have just said, let me just pour a whole bunch of fours all over the place. All right, they can still come off. Oh, we're having fun. Are we having fun? I think so. We're getting a little nervous about it, but we're having fun. Okay. Sorry, I'm off screen. Get some of these fours out of here. Put a big guy over there. Nope, he doesn't want to go on. Okay. And then we can press in, make it look a little bit more bubbly. Give me some of these that decided to go rogue on me. Okay, so here's what she looks like right now. I think I don't like it that much because it looks all one, like just one big blob. We'll have to see. I'm going to be messing with this for a little bit. See if I can come up with something I like more. Again, I might have to put another coat or two of these, you know, the finishing bubbles on top just to make it look a little bit better. And then I'll come back when I'm pretty satisfied with it. Okay, see you then. Okie dokie, since I last was here on bubbles, I added some more. Let's get this out of the way. Um, I put some more bubbles on here so that there's bubbles coming out of the pitcher. I added some bubbles coming off the side of the tub because there will be some bubbles on the bath mat and there will be a little micey in uh, that I sculpted. I uh, don't know where it is right now. It's probably over there in a safe place. So I don't lose it. Um, she's going to be looking at the bubbles on the floor. I put some bubbles on her drink and bubbles here and here and more on her legs just to make it look like she was really all bubbled up. Now, looking at this, I like this part. Oh, I should explain. This part right here is a whiter color because it hasn't dried yet. I've been using the water Let's do it this way so you can see. Uh, although I don't know how much you can see because the label has been cracking, but the water effects, and this is from the um, modeling like railroad woodland scenics. Railroad people use this to make their beautiful uh, landscapes and layouts when they do water. And I think, so that's why this is just a little white. It takes a really long time to dry. And when it does, it gets more of a clear color. And I'm pretty much thinking that I'm at the end of this. Hopefully, I just want to add, it just doesn't look right to me over here. So I just want to add a few more bubbles over in this area. And I'm just putting it on right like that, right out of the tube. I'm making sure it connects. I just want to add a few more because it just, I don't know, it really just doesn't look like I would want bubbles to look like. So, okay. It's really hard, I think, to 
accomplish using making a bubble bath. I have put so many layers on this. I'm afraid to put this on a scale to weigh it. Um, it's getting between the resin, the lots of resin. This is, I think, over five pounds, just as it is. So like I said, if I ever get to ship this thing anywhere, it's going to be as expensive as heck. Okay. So now I'm taking, again, wait, maybe I should do it this way. So you see, if you're just tuning into this whole long thing that I've been doing, uh, one of a kind artist emporium. These are the iris bubbles. I have them in all different sizes. She carries them, but she also carries these blue moonstone deco beads in 1.5 milligrams. And I think that they add a opaque -ish color because they're not as clear as the iris beads, but they add a little opaqueness. Well, here we go. Making a mess as usual. Um, to what I'm trying to accomplish here. And I'm really hoping that this is going to be my last layer of, of beads. Because I'd like to get this part of it over. Now, I just want to show you one section. And I don't know if you're going to be able to tell the difference. Over in here, you can tell that these are a little different than these. And this is because I was using, when I was doing this side, I was combining the water effects with the matte medium gel that I was showing you. And I think, and I mixed them and I think it gave it more of a creamy effect while this just looks like bubbles. I may at the end of this go in and take a little white gesso, very watered down, and just hit some of these areas here so there's more of a continuity between these bubbles and those bubbles. I don't know. We'll see. I think I'm probably going to do it though. And at this stage of the game, I'm just going to be adding bubbles individually. And when I do that, I usually like to start with my bigger bubbles first. These are the six millimeter ones. And just adding just a few bubbles to the whole thing. Just where I think it might look pretty. Because one of the things that I am really concerned about while I'm doing this is I don't want it to look um, overdone. I'd like it to look as realistic as possible. I need some more of you. I'd like it to look as realistic as possible. Um, but we'll see. Now, this I should say that this stuff, once it dries, it's, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. It keeps everything in there. None of my bubbles will be moving. And I always, when I finish with it, I try to close the, the cap on them because I had a spill the other day of some of the other bubbles and it, I'm still picking up the beads and I've swept about five or six times so far. So, ah, well, that's why we have this which I think I explained to you, I put paper towel down. So when it, if I do drop them, they don't bounce because these little guys bounce. It's amazing. I just want to add some more to this area. So it looks like the bubbles are coming up and over. Hmm. Maybe there's too much of a line looking there that all of a sudden the bubble stopped. So let's do this. Let's add a little bit more of that. Okay. And I really can't, I mean, what I've been doing is all different sizes, trying to keep it interesting that way. If you like the way these are coming out, um, it's sort of a, hopefully, it, basically this has been a hope it comes out nice type of fact. That's, that's it. Now, I don't have any of these really clear bubbles down here because these were all a part of the mixture. 
So I might just add one or two just to give it Well, I have them in my hand. Well, I have, you know, the size in my hand. Might as well add a little here and there. I also, I don't know if I told you this, but I took this water and I put, I took some of that purple ink that I've been using. I love that purple ink. And uh, I ran some of the purple ink over it and some white over it just to make a, uh, camouflage the wire a little bit more that's the size I was using let me go I'm now using oh, I did the six I needed the the four right was I using the four? Oh, okay so then maybe I, I'm hoping it's continued I don't know why it just went on and off there but my camera just went on and off maybe I hit it things are getting very strange around this house I hope both of these videos are going to take now that it did that to me. I hope I was videoing the first half. If I wasn't video videoing the first half and I'm only videoing this half just to get you up to date, I'm putting the finishing touches on some bubbles here and there because uh, I'm at the point where I think I'm basically done. Just want to add bubbles here and there. So... I'm using the water effects from Woodland Scenics. My camera just went on and off by itself. I do not know why. Whoa, where'd you go? Come back here, you little lovely thing. Yeah, one bubble right there. And like I was saying, here is more creamier. Here is more bubbly. I probably go through once this finally dries because this stuff takes a while to dry and maybe use a little white gesso on it. Okay, I have three of them open, which is dangerous. No, two of them open. Very dangerous. Don't do that. And now I'm just going to add, I have some of the, the, the marbles, the glass marbles in here because I picked it up so I let you know use everything waste not want not use some of those and then I'm gonna go to my little ones where are my little ones this is the 0.8 millimeter just to fill in some of the spots and if they fall that's why they're on here I'll collect them up and put them away Let me see. Am I happy with this finally? I am really would like to get to the point where I'm happy with it. So we, we can finish up the bubbles. The bubble video. I know a lot of bubbles are going in the side over there. Let me get this out. These things, when they fall on the floor, like I was saying, oh, okay, they go all over the place. Uh, that was one big one that didn't get pushed in enough. And all you have to really do to make it stay is push it in a little bit into this and it acts like a glue. If I am finding, okay, the things I will do after this, once I put this coat on and I'm happy with it, I will be making some of this area a little creamy colored like this by adding a little white gesso. And then if I am finding that these beads are coming off, which it would be, I don't think they will, I will go over it with a clear coat of either polyurethane or um, I have diamond glaze. And I might just use the diamond glaze to just make sure that nothing comes off. You don't want someone, you know, if one or two of them come off, that's fine. And that would probably be the extent of what would come off. I will be brushing this uh, with a brush to make sure that all the loose ones that aren't firmly adhered come off. Because I don't think 
The only ones that I'm really going to put back in are the big ones. I don't think many of the little ones, it's going to really matter if they come off. But there's some like over here in this corner that are loose that I want to make. Uh, I want to get them off. Let's see, do I have a paintbrush here? So I'll just brush them out of here. Because you don't want someone to go in. And there's a lot that fell down over here that aren't uh, glued in. You don't want someone to get this and then all of a sudden get a whole box full of bubbles because she's going to think they're or he, whoever buys it, they are going to think that you weren't caring enough about it to make sure that everything stays on. Also on the bubbles that are on the arms, hope you can see that I put some bubbles on her arms and legs. I might add a little of that uh, white gesso, washed down white gesso just to make it look more sudsy here and there, not totally completely, but just here and there. And pushing them in and trying to not get garbage. Okay, hold on, we got a little piece of garbage. You have time to work this because like I said, this stuff takes a long time to dry. Did it come off? No, of course not. There we go. Uh, some of these paintbrushes, I sort of got them. They were very old, but they were still in good condition. But the paint that was on the handles looks coming off. But if the brushes are still good, I will use them. And I think I've told, said it before, I'm pretty hard on brushes. I don't take as much care as I should. And, um, whoa. Okay, see that's good. You see which ones aren't on firmly enough. I was a big guy. Where did the big guy come from? I put a big guy down there. Where did that big guy come Oh, I can't even tell anymore. You want to put him All right, well, we'll figure all of that out. If you just press them in, as long as they have some contact with this water effect stuff, they will stay. I could be pushing my luck with some of these. Do I want that big one to go over there? How does it look over there? And you just have to talk yourself through it. I, by using the different sizes that um, One of a Kind Artist Emporium has, by using different sizes and um, And a little patience you'll get there I hope that one's in pretty good that one's still deciding if it wants to stay in so let's add a little bit more of this so okay let's add a little bit more of this okay to hold it there in place this is getting a little gonky on top so take it off now if you wanted okay Two things again. I'm going to probably play with this a little bit more, see if I need it, but you don't need to watch me play with it. You pretty much have the idea of how to make bubbles. Um, if you wanted to make this a different color, I made a witch's cauldron and I put these bubbles in and I, I believe I used orange um, and colored the whole thing orange. I'm not sure what I used. I think it was alcohol inks. Uh, to change it to be like an, just an orange glaze. So once everything was safely glued in, I took some orange alcohol ink. And knowing me, I probably put more alcohol in it just to make it like a very light glaze and put layers and layers of the colors on. And you can change these to whatever color. Now you're going to lose the iris, which is the rainbow effect um, on that, but it still looked very very pretty so this is the end of the bubble video I believe that I am happy with her and now I'm just gonna wait for everything to dry and um, so the only thing left after that and the, the few other things that I told you I was going to do is I'm going to decide if I am going to glue her down 
I'm going to have to use a two-part epoxy glue to do that. You can get that at hardware stores just to make sure that she stays down on it because she's, she's not really going to move once she has some kind of glue on it because she is very heavy. So that I could also glue in the floor mat and the little mouse that will have some bubbles on the floor mat looking at them. So we're almost done. We are almost done. It's funny to me that the inspiration piece is pretty much the last thing I'm going to be doing. Um, just so, you know, every all of the videos will be in order. I just have to color the moss on the castle a little bit and put my bats on. And then I am finished so I can get these videos up. So if you are in the house like I am, um, where just I'm sort of giving myself my own stay in place orders at these current times. And if people are watching these videos in a few years from now, um, just look back to what was going on in 2020 and you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm just going to complete this up so I can get the videos up, up on YouTube so that maybe you can enjoy and have something else besides all the other things that you're viewing. So. I'll see you in the next set. Bye. I thought I would come in with just one more thing regarding the bubbles in case you would like to know um, how much I used of each bubbles. Now, the, uh, the smallest ones, the 0.8, uh, 0.80 millimeter, I used, I would say, this is my third container of these because I had some before. Uh, definitely, if it's not my third, it's definitely my second. And you can see that there's not that much left. These are the tiniest beads that I used, and they were basically the background beads. The 1.5 Blue Moonstone, I, this is, I bought one of everything else, and this is what I have left over. The 1.5 Blue Moonstone, I have you know a little bit left. I use those a lot also. Uh, the 2.0, I have quite a bit of the 2.0s. The 3.0s, I seem to have used the least because they're the ones that I have the most of. This is the 4.0, and this is the 6.0. These are the biggest bubbles that she carries in her store. Um, so this is just basically the amount of bubbles and iris beads that I used with, a, again, the 0 0.80 millimeter, the ones that I use the most. So if you're planning on doing any kind of a scene with bubbles, you can go and decide uh, how many you want to buy of each. I would have been able to just get away with one of these if I was just doing a small area. And you don't have to get all of the sizes. Uh, you can skip the twos and just get maybe the fours and the sixes or skip the threes and get the twos, the four and the sixes. Um, I got all of the sizes because there was such a large amount of area that I had to cover in the bathtub. So um, I'm definitely going to put the link to the One of a Kind Honest Emporium shop in the uh, description down below so that you can go and purchase if you're interested in doing the same thing and making bubbles someplace else or for whatever projects, you can go and purchase these. All right, so now we're at the last update of the, the bubbles, and we're working on the next uh, group of videos. So have fun. Take care. Bye.